Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. As everyone mutes their mics, we are here for our Saturday service on Friday night, mainly for the holidays so everyone can have the weekend to go visit relatives and, and you know, go places and have fun for the holidays. So we are going to read 2 Peter chapter 2. And we hope this blesses your heart as much as we hope it blesses ours. Amen. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily, or secretly, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of, of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly, and delivered just Lot, vexed with filthy conversation, with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelleth among them, in seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh, in the lust of uncleanness, and despise governments. Presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Okay, I'm going to stop there because it just goes on and on dealing with that. But what I want to say to you is we have to be careful of false prophets. We have to be careful of false even false believers, hypocrites, people who misrepresent the gospel. Because there are people out there, one of my friends and I were talking earlier this afternoon about the danger of so many out there mixing Christianity with witchcraft. And here's the sad part, you guys. That's why you have to watch out for false prophets. There are many out there that are preaching and teaching the gospel. And they are the ones mixing the good with the bad. They think they can mix dark with lightness and it's okay. They think if they mix a little light with a whole lot of darkness, it'll bring light to the darkness. It'll make it good, a good thing as they say. But it doesn't because God says, touch not the unclean thing. And unfortunately, many do. I mentioned a while back I had walked into a church and I was shocked to see in the vestibule booths with different so-called Christians setting up so that they could have customers come and pay them to read their palms. A church, wow. a so-called wow. Christian church. They had another booth set up for tarot card readings. They had another booth set up for astrology. They had another booth set up for hypnosis. I could not believe what I was seeing. And when wow. I mentioned it to the pastor who introduced himself to me, he said, yes, we like everyone to feel free to express their faith their own way. Now, let me tell you this, this is not of God. Because when you look at the book, of Joshua, and I'm going to read it. I believe it's Joshua chapter 7. I'm going to read it right now. 
Book of Joshua, and I'll make my point. I'm clicking to it, so give me a second. <laughs> okay, Book of Joshua. Here we go. There it is. Joshua chapter one, 7, you guys. All right. Now, the reason I like reading the word is because there are so many out there that don't and some that cannot read. So if it seems like I'm a little heavy into reading, that's the reason. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carney, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah took of the accursed thing and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethaven on the east side of Bethel and spake unto them saying, go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. <clears throat> and they returned to Joshua and said unto him, let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make all and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but a few. So now this is my two cents. They were saying, Well, we don't need all these folks to go up because there's not many people in Ai. That'll be an easy victory. You just need a couple of thousand of us and and, and we're good to go. So, verse 4. So there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. They went up two or 3,000, three or 4,000 people, but to a small place, but they ended up turn, turn tailing and running. Why? They suffered defeat. Anytime you Sit yourself under the, the, the ear, the ear reach of a person preaching a double tongue gospel. They speak with forked tongue. They call righteous wrong and wrong right. And they're mixing the good with the bad. They're mixing the godly with the demonic. I'm telling you, Knowingly, I'm talking about prophets that know what they're doing. That's very dangerous. Don't sit under those kind of leaders. All right. Now they suffered defeat because God will not commingle with sin. God will not commingle with cursed items, with a cursed lifestyle. He will not commingle. So they came immediately out of the ark of safety because they commingled. Now listen, and they so most of them didn't even know it. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay. And the men of Ai smote of them about 30 and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shabaram, and smote them in the going down Wherefore, the hearts of the people melted and became as water. They were terrorized. And Joshua read his clothes. And I'm sorry, I added they were terrorized as an explanation. And then the word says, And Joshua read his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us unto the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt in the other side of Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around, that means uh, surround us, and cut off our name from the earth. <clears throat> and what wilt thou do unto, unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Where 
Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen, and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Now check this out. This is the bottom line to all of you that think you can mix God with Satan. <clears throat> Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Now, I know people who have gotten caught up unknowingly. And as soon as they got some knowledge, got wind of it, they got rid of everything. They got straight with God right on time. That's a blessing. But there are some of you on YouTube, some of you out there that aren't, even, whether you walk with the Lord or whether you just have religion, you think it's okay to play with tarot cards. You think it's okay to call a psychic and consult with a psychic about your God-given destiny. How can a psychic tell you what God's plan is for your life? I'm talking about these paid psychics that go under the guise. But anyway, I'm not even going to go deep into that. But listen, what are you consulting with? What are you pulling on? What sources of power are you pulling on? Now, when I asked the Lord what to read, in all honesty, I had no clue. And 2 Peter chapter 2 popped in my head plain as day. So I know he wants me to deal with the lies of the false prophets, with misleading and the, the false teaching that goes with the Christian faith, unfortunately. There are always going to be wheat, uh, tares among the wheat. There are always going to be the hypocrites rising up among the real, among the genuine born-again Christians. So even if you don't know the difference, God does. And he will handle those that are misleading others. Now, there are some that get misled, they get straight, and they get on the, on the good foot. For example, I got misled getting caught up in a relationship I should not have gotten caught up in. God opened my eyes, warned me, told me a lot of stuff in advance. When I saw it unfolding, I got out of that relationship quick, fast, in a hurry, and maintained my relationship with the Lord. But see, many of you, you get so caught up in the mess, you turn your back on God, and that mess becomes your God. That mess becomes your idol. That's when you're really in dangerous territory. Now what God did, this is where you have to realize why you have to be careful. Well, God's bringing to my mind right now. Some of you have children that are dabbling in the occult. Some of you adults are dabbling in the occult. Some of you may have a cousin that's just staying with you for two months and they're gonna go get their own place, but they got all kind of mess up in your house. Ouija boards, tarot cards, psychic readings, uh, all kind of mess, candles, uh, incantations, all kind of little white witchcraft books and all that stuff. And you think it's okay. Or you don't even know about it. Now, the dangerous part is when you don't know about it and all hell is breaking loose in your house and you wonder why your children are acting bizarre. Why arguments are breaking out between you and your spouse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of times that's because there's an accursed thing hidden among your stuff. Now, you're in more danger if you know about it because God holds you accountable for allowing it. But if you don't know about it and stuff starts going cuckoo when you move somebody in your house, you better ask God what's going on. He'll show you because he knows you don't know. For your own protection, he'll show you. These are the last days, you guys, and I'm going to tell you, there are so many false truths out there that sound so 
plausible. They sound so real. They sound so doable. They're so enticing and so infatuating. And oh my goodness, they're so intriguing and they satisfy our curiosity. And oh my goodness, we get so fascinated and enticed. But I'm telling you, all it will bring into your life is confusion, defeat, destruction of many different sorts, damage, loss. You have got to be careful. You have got to be careful. Some of you have lost your children or your family members because of the stuff you dabbled in, because you didn't listen. See, God gives us time to listen and get it straight. That's his mercy. But some of you won't listen. Some of you think you know it all. So you don't want to hear what another born again Christian has to say. You don't want anybody getting on your case and raining on your parade because you're having fun. To you, it's more exciting than the things that you see in the Bible. Because see, God's not trying to prove himself to anybody. But when you deal with the occult, you find all kind of powers that are right there at your fingertips. Powers. Ooh, exciting. You got to be careful. You have to be careful. Have you ever picked up any of those seashells at the seashore? The ones that mm -hmm. look like they're coiled up? Well, if you pick one up, that has a live sea uh, thing in it, and it's living, it's alive. You pick it up, it's beautiful, the shell is iridescent, it's gorgeous, and you wanna put it to your ear so you can hear the echo of the ocean. But if you don't know there's something alive in that thing and it stings you, you could die if you have an adverse reaction. You have to be careful the things you pick up in this world in these last days. You have got to be careful what you put your hands on. You've got to be careful what you put your ear to, who you listen to. You've got to be careful whose advice you take, who you consult with, who you line your life up with. I knew a man years ago. I thought it was the most ridiculous thing and I wasn't even saved at the time. This man would read the horoscope. He consulted with it every single day. And if the horoscope said, this is not going to be a good day for you, you need to stay in if you're a Libra or a Capricorn or this, that, or the other. If he was one of those signs, guess what? Brother man would not leave his house. But if God said, don't do this. Don't do that. Lest the worst thing come upon you. You don't want to hear that, do you? And that's something. Uh, some people will obey some print on in a newspaper. Some people will line up with a with the the little fortune in the, in the, in the fortune cookie. Some people will go and call a number of somebody sitting up there uh clowning around making money with psych readings because they can feel you out and they're sitting up here giving you some nonsense about how they see money coming your way and oh it's going to be great and uh I mean, and listen to this this is how bad it gets you call some of these christian so-called prophets let's go there because that's what the bible's really dealing with false prophets you call a false prophet they tell you you call this number, you give me an offering of $25, and I will give you a reading. That is not a prophet, y'all. That's a false prophet. That's a false prophet playing psychic, just making money, making merchandise of you. And you think you're hearing from God. Don't you know that familiar spirits follow you around? Familiar spirits know you from day one. And they know how to collaborate with other demons. 
and they know how to make somebody know things about you. And you think they're consulting with God when they're consulting with demons. And familiar spirits can give, can give them the whole 411 on you, baby. And you think, wow, ooh, ah, please. There is a penalty. The battle of AI was their penalty. Losing it was their penalty. And let me show you how much God hates us dabbling with the occult, with things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of Christ. Listen to this. This is the consequence they pay. And I ask you, what consequence do you want to pay? You're going to hear a story in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And, and uh, a person I know and I are going to warn you and scare you straight. But for right now, let's deal with the Bible. Okay. Now. And he brought the family of Judah. Let's read from verse 16. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarhites, and he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carney, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. Now here's what I'm talking about. The ones that pay the biggest penalty are those that do it secretly, that slip, slide, peep, hide. They hide their sin. Why do they hide it? They know it's a sin. But see, God is merciful to the ignorant. There are people that they don't hide it because they think it's okay. But see, God will help them because he's merciful. But those of you who know that you're on that edge and you don't want this one to know what you're doing. You don't want that one to know what you're doing and you're keeping it on the down low. Oh God, well, you know what the Bible says if you hide your sin, God will expose you. And that's what he's doing right here with Achan because Achan hid his sin. All right, so he brought the household man by man. Okay, verse 19. And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession unto him and tell me what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth, in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messages, messengers, and they ran unto the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment. I'm slowing down so you really hear this for those of you who like to hide your mess. And the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, why 
hast thou troubled us. The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Now, I'm going to stop right there because, I mean, whoa. Well, no, I got to read the last verse. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Acre unto this day. Now, in chapter 8, they go back to Ai and they win the victory, an easy victory. Because there's no more sin hid in their stuff. How many defeats are you guys willing to suffer for the sake of some hidden sin that you know you have no business messing with? Many of you are out there playing two against the middle. You want to sleep with the devil and you want to date God and you think it's okay to have a part-time lover on both sides. That's not God's way. He said, my spirit will not always strive with you. Now, dum-dums like me and other people I know who innocently walked into the devil's trap, guess what? God protects us. We go, you know, we pay a little fine and we're good to go. We get a little slap on the wrist from the Lord because he's merciful and he's, tend he's of tender mercies. He's kind. He's understanding. He knows the dum-dums from the, re the rebels. He knows the difference. But for those of you who are just dog determined to do it your way, to have things your way because you like that stuff and you like those tarot cards and you like those candles and, and you like going to the to the wicker to consult with this, that, and the other and, and you like the the the, uh, the, uh, the witchcraft movies and the Terry Potters and all of these little Harry Potter, whatever you call it, all these little fun, the the uh, the uh, crystal ball, woo, and all of that is just like, you're not ready to let it go? Not even for God? Well, guess what, baby? I question if you ever knew God. Because if you knew God, you cut it loose like a dead dog. You would cut that thing loose like it had leprosy before you'd let anything wedge its way between you and your relationship with God. And if you're not ready to cut it loose, I warn you this day, you are on dangerous turf. You are in grave danger. Your life, your family, everything that pertains to you, and your health. And don't forget your soul. You are in danger, grave danger. Leave that stuff alone. Turn from your wicked ways. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, and seek my face. Then will I turn and turn. Oh my goodness, I gotta say it right. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Healing is yours. But you got to humble yourself. You got to confess. You got to pray. You got to seek his face. And you got to turn from it. Forsake it. Disengage completely from it. You can't sleep with the devil by night and wake up in the morning in the bed with God by day and fix God some breakfast and think he's okay with it. Come on. I know that's a, a crass example, but I'm trying to get you to see the point. God will not be your part-time lover. God will not be your one-night stand. And he will not take you out on a date. Choose you this day whom you will serve. 
God, his righteousness, or Satan and his wickedness? Whom will you serve? To whom you yield your bodies, that's who you serve. And who you serve, that is your God. Either God in heaven or Satan in hell. You make the choice. Because I'm going to tell you, baby, when you play with anything that has to do with Satan, everything on him has a stinger. Everything on him has a poisonous bite. Everything on him will pull you and tie you up in a web of confusion, craziness. You have got to cut Satan loose. He hates you with a cruel hatred. Don't be fooled. He may come to you as an angel of light. But if you don't have the gift of discerning of spirits, if you're not consulting with God and seeking God's face, I pity the fool. I hate to say it like, like uh, Mr. T. I pity the fool that falls for Satan's lies and rejects God's truth. You are aimed for destruction. Mm. Okay, that's enough of my warning that we're coming into the new year. I ask you to leave all the things. If you have jewelry with upside down crosses, if you have a tarot card, an old Ouija board up in the attic or in the garage, if you have uh, any types of candles that you light and, and quote incantations or whatever you do. If you have any kind of little ointments and oils and whatever, incense that you burn towards whatever you burn them. Even those of you who dabble in yoga and all that other crap. You guys, I'm telling you, you cannot co-mingle. God is so against it. You see how he dealt with it. Yes, we're in the New Testament times. Yes, we're in the dispensation of grace, but God ain't no fool. Don't think you can play both sides against the middle. You cannot. God's not going to be laying on one side of you while the devil's laying on the other side and you holding hands with both. That ain't going to happen. Not with God. Oh, I feel like I'm fussing and I'm not trying to fuss. I'm trying to warn you guys. Stop playing. It really is dangerous. Some of you will lose your children. Some of you will suffer great losses that will never be able to be restored because you refuse to turn back to God. If Achan had brought it up before the Lord exposed him, don't you know he would have found more mercy? But he kept hiding it until God was forced to expose him. When you force God's hand, you think, see, some of you think the devil has more power than God because God has not shown off. He has not, he's not flamboyant with his skills like Satan is. But I tell you, babe, what's being made is always less powerful than the creator. God created good and he created evil. Now he's got the wisdom in that. But for us to have freedom of choice, there has to be a contrast. So you can see the devil more as his, as his bellhop. He carries out the dirty deeds because we have to have a choice. But some of you, you just, you won't make the right choice. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Is goodness just too boring for you? You prefer violence and hatred and rape and, and, and witchcraft and death and, and darkness and spookiness and ooh, you, you like all that stuff. Things that go bump in the night. Oh, 
until you experience the goodness of God, until you experience his supernatural love, until you experience him, his glory, his presence, you will be so easily duped. Please don't choose Satan over God. You're choosing eternal damnation and hell on earth. Oh, he'll give you your jollies for a minute to reel you all the way in. And when he's got his hook all the way up through your brain, guess what? It's over then. Too little, too late. Please think about what I'm telling you. It's a warning. Do not take the nonsense into 2019. Don't take it into tomorrow. Get rid of it now. Today is the day of salvation. God bless you.